member of the subcommittee for his opening statement or comments. Mr. Petri. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to thank you for scheduling this important follow-up hearing to our 2009 hearings on air carrier safety and the FAA's call to action issue, issue, issued following the tragic Colgan 3407 accident almost one year ago. Well, statistically, the U.S. commercial aviation system is very safe. There's obviously always room for improvement. With today's hearing, we continue our focus on the common goal of improving our safety record. As the families of the victims of Colgan Flight 3407 remind us, we can and must do everything in our power to ensure that what happened on the day they lost their loved ones never happens again. I believe we're all committed to that shared goal. In the aftermath of the Colgan accident, this subcommittee explored many issues related to safety of the airline system with special emphasis on regional air carriers. In addition, Mr. Costello, Mr. Micah, Mr. Oberstar, and I introduced the bipartisan H.R. 3371 Airline Safety and Pilot Training Improvement Act of 2009 to address the critical safety issues considered at our hearings. H.R. 3371 was approved by the House of Representatives on October 14th last year, and similar provisions have been included in the Senate Commerce Committee's FAA reauthorization package. Roughly the same time, the FAA launched a call to action on air carrier safety. I thank the Administrator for joining us this morning and look forward to his update on the progress of the wide-ranging initiatives included uh, in his plan. At uh, Tuesday's uh, Transportation Safety Board hearing on the Colgan accident, the Board approved recommendations to the FAA regarding many of the issues explored during our hearings, including strategies to prevent flight crew monitoring failures, pilot professionalism, fatigue, remedial training, access to pilot records, stall training, and airspeed selection procedures. In addition, the MTSB's probable cause determination for the Colgan accident approved by the Board on Tuesday included among the contributing factors to the accident the flight crew's failure to adhere to sterile cockpit procedures. In fact, in four of the last six regional carrier accidents, pilot performance and unprofessional behavior have been listed as contributory factors. I applaud Administrator Babbitt for demanding a higher level of professionalism from all those involved in aviation, including airline pilots. As the safety regulator for the industry and a former airline pilot himself, Administrator Babbitt understands not only the trust passengers quite literally place into pilots' hands, but also the responsibility pilots must be ever mindful of while on duty. Look forward to hearing from the Administrator what specific actions the FAA, airlines, and the pilots' unions are taking to improve peer auditing and professional conduct. In addition, I'm interested in updates from the FAA about the ongoing regulatory efforts at the FAA to address pilot training, record availability, and fatigue. Finally, I'm also interested in what improvements can be put in place to improve air carrier hiring practices and training oversight. Since the FAA's call to action began last summer, the Office of the Inspector General has been reviewing the agency's effort, and I look forward to Inspector General Scoville's assessment of efforts thus far on the part of the FAA, airlines, and unions, as well as continuing oversight of long-term commitments made during the call to action process. Lastly, I'd like to note the dedicated efforts of the families of Continental Flight 3407. Families' efforts have helped this committee to address key safety issues, and I urge our Senate colleagues to pass its FAA reauthorization bill so that we may find, finalize these improvements and send a final bill to the President. Thank the witnesses for their participation and uh, yield back what time I might have. Mr.